Mr. President. Senator from Montana. Mr. President, this Saturday, June 27th, marks post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD awareness day. This marks a critical opportunity to remind people about the prevalence of mental illnesses like PTSD among our active duty troops and our veterans. By generating more awareness, we can help remove the stigma about PTSD and encourage people to seek treatment and in turn to save lives. PTSD is a serious problem affecting too many of our country's bravest individuals and we must do more to help our heroes. According to a study by the RAND Corporation, 20% of Iraq and Afghanistan war veterans report symptoms of PTSD. And of those, only about half actually seek treatment. You know, our nation made a promise to our men and our women in uniform, when they come home from war and their time in service to our country, we will be there for them. We need to have the same concern for our service members' mental health as we do for their physical health. For far too long, we've been focused on the physical wounds of war. But as many of our veterans know too well, the mental wounds also inflict great damage. I'm proud to serve as a senator for a state with a rich legacy of service. I'm proud to be the son of a U.S. Marine. One in ten Montanans have proudly served in our armed forces, making the treasure state home to more veterans per capita than almost any other state in our nation. According to the VA, Montana is home to nearly 100,000 veterans, 75,000 of whom served our nation during wartime. And as a son of a Marine, I strongly believe we have a duty to ensure that the made to these men and these women are kept. There's no greater honor or responsibility than fighting for our veterans. We owe them our freedom. We owe them nothing but our best. Anything less is unacceptable. You know, I've had many conversations with the brave men and women who have gone overseas in the name of freedom. And one of the many concerns they've expressed is the negative stigma surrounding post-traumatic stress in our military. For too long, our servicemen and women have attempted to hide mental health issues from their superiors out of fear of being discharged. And that is why I'm committed to raising PTSD awareness to overcome the misinformation and the stigma surrounding these mental health challenges. I'm proud to be working on Senate Bill 1567 with Gary Peters and Tom Tillis to ensure due process for veterans who suffer from mental health illnesses and may have been erroneously given an administrative discharge rather than honorable discharge. It helps ensure that active duty service members who suffer from invisible wounds like PTSD and traumatic brain injuries, also called TBIs, aren't incorrectly administratively discharged, putting their hard-earned benefits at risk. This bill is just a small step that Congress can take towards ensuring the stigma facing PTSD is lifted and hopefully allowing more vets to seek out treatment for PTSD. In the last few years, I'm glad to say that our country has taken steps to ensure that our troops and our veterans get the mental health services they need upon their return home. More than ever, our troops and veterans are seeking treatment. They're receiving timely diagnosis. They're getting needed care. But we've got a long ways to go. Too many veterans are taking their own lives, and unfortunately, Montana consistently ranks near the top for suicides in our country. One story from Montana particularly resonated with me. In fact, it occurred in my hometown of Bozeman. I went to kindergarten through college in Bozeman because on May 29, 2013, U.S. Army Private First Class Way Christensen took his own life. He was 23 years old. Private First Class Christensen served this country as a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division and was deployed to Afghanistan with his unit in 2009. During an ambush, he sustained severe injuries to his face and to his arms. After his return to Montana, Wade struggled with both the physical and the mental healing process. Wade's brother, Matt, talked about how Wade's mood would change when he wouldn't be able to take his medication, when the VA failed to give him the meds 
on time. I wish I could stand here and tell you that Wade Christensen's story is unique. Unfortunately, he's just one of the many veterans who committed suicide in my state that year. In fact, between 2004 and 2013, there were 566 suicides by Montana veterans. In Montana and across the nation, too many of our veterans struggle with PTSD. They struggle with depression. And veteran depression not only affects the individual, but also the loved ones closest to the veteran as well. The emotional toll on the family is immense. To have a loved one serve overseas, only to come back as a shell of what they once were is difficult. PTSD Awareness Day invites us to address the larger issues facing veterans who are suffering from post-traumatic stress. We do everything in our power to protect our service members while they're overseas. We must do the same to address their needs once they return home. That includes reducing the stigma attached to PTSD and doing more to help brave vets find good paying jobs and that transition back into civilian life. Now is the time to act and to work towards real solutions that protect our veterans here at home. They are an embodiment of the ideals this nation holds dear, and I believe it's our job to do everything in our power to protect them. Before I end my remarks, Mr. President, I want to encourage everyone, if they or a loved one is struggling with mental illness or PTSD, there's help available. You can visit www.ptsd.va.gov. That's www.ptsd.va.gov, where they'll find resources that are available for our veterans. Mental illness is not something anyone should have to go through alone. Seeking help is not a sign of weakness, but instead, it's a testament to an individual's character. Thank you, Mr. President, and I yield back.